Hello friends, so in the previous episode I have introduced Monigon, a multi-tenancy boilerplate for Ruby on Rails, where basically you can have uh, organizations and users can be members of an organization and they can uh, have role-based access to different resources inside the organization. It is built more or less on this kind of architecture. Uh, here's an example of uh, a user that can have multiple memberships within an uh, account organization. Or this is basically the uh, architecture where everything belongs to a tenant or organization or account, whatever you name it, and uh, all the downstream resources should have uh, a tenant or organization ID set. So everything is scoped to an uh, organization. Now, whenever you want to implement multi-tenancy, you would maybe think of adding some kind of multi-tenancy gem that uh, would uh, have to solve all your multi-tenancy problems. But uh, usually this kind of multi-tenancy gems, they don't uh, provide the whole solution to uh, like the views and the controllers. They only provide some kind of uh, mechanism to scope uh, the data from the database. So for example, gem acts as tenant its main feature is being an additional layer of security. So uh, if you add the gem access tenant, you can uh, add uh, a default scope to your projects, for example, that you cannot uh, query all the projects in the database. You have to first set an, uh, a tenant or an organization. You can only get projects within one organization. So this is kind of an additional security measure. Now let's try adding the gem access tenant to an existing application. In this case, I'm going to add it to the default code provided by Monigon. And let's see how we can make access tenant work. So first of all, I'm going to go and add the gem access tenant to my gem file. Uh, yeah, I'll add it next to authentication and authorization bundle. So going further, I need to set the current tenant for the X as tenant gem. So I'm not doing it by based on subdomain or based on domain. We have a, a URL or root based uh, uh, way of setting the current uh, organization. So I'm going to set the current tenant through a filter. I'm going to copy this. And uh, where I'm am I going to set the current tenant? Now, definitely not on application controller because I want to have resources in my application that uh, don't require current tenant. I can set it somewhere on organization level. So all the resources that are scoped to organization will uh, have to have uh, this in their controllers. Uh, we are going to set the tenant uh, uh, inside the resources that belong to a tenant or organization. Now you see in inboxes, they inherit from organization space controller, same with memberships, they inherit from organization space controller. And in the space controller, I have this uh, before action to set the organization. So instead of this before action, I'm going to copy the code from access tenant, set current tenant through filter. Uh, the before action, well, let's name it the set tenant, or it can actually be the set organization. And uh, we will have uh, current organization uh, equals um, equals uh, actually it's going to equal uh, this current user organizations find by params organization. So here we have uh, here we are setting current account. We are setting current tenant for access tenant, and uh, we might still want to say at uh, organization equals current account. Okay. Uh, we can comment out the previous way of how we were setting the current organization. Now we also set uh, the organization on access tenant level. Let's uh, try run our tests and see if the tests uh, are passing. Okay, undefined method uh, set organization. Yeah, I have to uh, why is it undefined because I didn't rename this one. Okay, let's run the tests once again. Okay, so all the tests uh, are passing. Looks uh, fine, but uh, we really didn't uh, do anything yet. Uh, we need to still say that uh, each model that uh, has to be scoped to an organization uh, belongs to it via access tenant. So uh, going further, we have the example of scoping the models. We're going to say 
instead of belongs to organization, we are going to say acts as tenant organization. So uh, which ones are these? These are membership.rb. Instead of belongs to organization, we will have acts as tenant organization. It's kind of belongs to plus a scope. And uh, same with inboxes. An example of a message resource, instead of belongs to organization, we will have access tenant organization. Let's run the test once again and see if uh, they're still passing. Yes, they are still passing. Now let's try getting all the uh, inboxes in our application, inbox.all. You see, we can get uh, inboxes across multiple organizations at the moment uh, from our console. And uh, we could, in theory, say inbox uh, destroy all, and it will destroy all the inboxes. And it is uh, not considered a good security practice to be able to uh, get all resources from all the organizations uh, uh, programmatically or from kind of some kind of super user. Don't You shouldn't have access to resources outside of your organization. So uh, that's why we're going down to the main security feature of acts as tenant, that is uh, the setting to require a tenant. Let's create this acts as tenant initializer. Uh, if you are adding the gem acts as tenant, I think there's uh, no point of adding uh, this gem if you don't uh, uh, add the require tenant as true. So let's say require tenant. Let's run uh, the tests. Okay, and now the tests are failing with the uh, no tenant set. Interesting. Now, before fixing the tests, let's have a look at our Rails console. So again, I will try to get all the inboxes, inbox.all, and you see I get this error, access tenant, no tenant set. And this is what uh, this uh, config require tenant does. So I cannot get all the tenants or all the inboxes. I have to have a tenant set. Let's try setting the tenant in the console. Acts uh, as tenant, current tenant equals organization dot first. Now let's get all the inboxes. And you see inbox all gets only the inboxes that belong to this organization. So you see this is an additional level of security, a default scope, having to set the organization to be able to get resources scope to the organization. This is uh, a good security feature. Okay, so let's go and uh, make our application work with uh, this uh, setting of required tenant equals true. First of all, we see that this uh, test is failing. Uh, Organizations controller, uh, no tenant set. So we've got all the tests kind of failing at the moment. Now let's try run our server and uh, try to see something. So you see, I just tried to go to the root part and current user organizations fails because we need to have the tenant set. Why do we need to have the tenant set to just view the organizations where the current user is a member? Well, because we set access tenant on the membership. So actually, you don't want to set access tenant on the membership of current user. You want to set it on all the other downstream models except of membership. So membership is just going to be belongs to. Membership should be accessible without having uh, like the list of memberships of the current user should be accessible without having the current tenant set. So, uh, okay, now launching the app works. I can navigate around. Let's try running the tests again. Okay, and we have just three tests uh, failing. So uh, uh, one is in organizations controller and two in inboxes controller. So organizations controller test uh, 64. Let's have a look at this test. Line 64 is for on admin can destroy an organization. Let's go to our organizations uh, controller here for destroy. Now for the destroy action, we need to actually set the current tenant. Why? Because uh, it is going to affect the downstream uh, uh, associations. So uh, to be able to destroy, like organization has many inboxes, to be able to destroy the inboxes of an organization, we need to set the current organization. So here we are going to manually set uh, the tenant. Uh, I will say acts uh, as tenant with tenant at organization do uh, organization destroy. And this way, the downstream uh, uh, inboxes will be destroyed. Let's run the test once again. 
and we have just uh, two tests failing inside our inboxes controller test line 23 so you see this uh, so difference is failing and actually it's an interesting case that we have to manually set uh, the tenant uh, around this request i found the solution here in this uh, thread that uh, uh, access tenant doesn't work well with this assert uh, difference so we need to manually set uh, the tenant i think uh, we should say something like uh, acts as tenant uh, dot current tenant equals organization here and here let's see if this test passes okay we have just uh, mm. Yeah, it's still not possible. Maybe I need to set it also before. Okay, we have just one failure left. Let's uh, fix the destroying of organization with a third difference. So one, two, setting the tenant. Okay, and voila, our application has integrated the uh, acts as tenant with the uh, strict uh, security. So. Uh, access tenant has to be always set to access uh, uh, resources that are scoped to an organization and uh, all our tests passing, everything works. So that's how you integrate access tenant with uh, strict security into an existing application. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.